We've been talking about the ideals of warrior honor that have come down to us from the ancient Greeks. But today I wanna to talk about a different um, part of their legacy to us. And this is the idea of the citizen soldier. Now, this was something that was radically new in the ancient world and had never happened before. It was a real outlier. And if you think about the Persians, King Xerxes and what they brought to the Battle of Thermopylae that we're gonna be talking about more and more here, their concept, there was a, a great lord, the king, and under him were nobles, barons and knights and so forth that fought as individual champions, often on horseback, surrounded by their kind of minions, but it was not really a standing army or anything like that. It was, uh, it was an, an, an honor-bred uh, collection of nobles. Now, the other thing, uh, the King Xerxes had like 40 nations that he could call upon when he came and invaded Greece. And some of them, the wild tribes of what is now Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, were literally robbers and marauders. They were like the, uh, the names of some of these tribes were the Sakai, the Masagetai, and so forth, the Scythians. And they were basically raiders, horse, horse mounted raiders that uh, attacked, you know, and just lived by banditry or following the seasonal grass. And when they sometimes, when the Persians would recruit from say the region between the Tigris and the Euphrates, Mesopotamia, they would just recruit the basically the serfs and the farmers who were basically slaves, chattel, and weren't even soldiers. And they would come, sometimes they didn't even have weapons, and they would just fight as a giant mass. But the Greek way was an entirely different thing. The reason why I'm standing here in front of this citrus grove is the citizen soldier in, say, Athens or Argos or any of the Greek cities other than Sparta, which were professionals, would have the small landowners that would have a farm and would be wealthy enough that they could afford a suit of armor. And above their fireplace, they would have their suit of armor and their spear and their helmet and their shield. And when it came time to fight a war, they would be called up much like the reserves are today in our Western world. And they would go out and they would fight whatever war it was. And then they'd come back and go back to the farm and back to what they were doing. And that is kind of, the ideal, whether we realize it or not, that we in the West have totally imbibed, it comes straight down to us. If you think about our Minutemen at Lexington and Concord, if you think about the soldiers in the American Civil War, if you think about the greatest generation in World War II, they were basically citizen soldiers who were not professionals, who were called up in an hour of need, who the only thing they wanted to do was get back home to their wives and children and continue their lives. But from that concept came the, the idea of democracy. And this is like the great heritage that came straight out of the kind of the way the Greeks fought and the warriors because, and their warrior style of honor. Because if you, if you think about it, if you're fighting, you're taking down your suit of armor, your shield, your spear, and you're going to fight for Athens or Argos or whatever, when that's over, you're gonna to wanna to have a say in what the government is and what the issues were. And the second part of that that really is really important is the sense of mutual responsibility, responsibility to each other and accountability to each other. Because if you think about the phalanx of any city, Argos, Athens, Thebes, whatever, if you're an individual warrior marching towards the enemy, in front of you, two or three ranks might be your brother, and your cousin might be right behind you, your son could be over here. So that when the fight was over and you went home, everybody saw how you had done, and you saw how everybody else had done. And so there was definitely a very strong sense through continuity of accountability to each other. And in the sense of self-government, self-autonomy and democracy, out of that came the concept of trial by jury, where we would have our fellow citizens would sit in judgment upon us or whoever, and also the concept of the assembly, where everybody would get together and talk and debate and vote. And all of that arose out of the citizen soldier, the farmer, that had his own plot of land. And this was really true like back in our days of the founding fathers, Jefferson, Madison, Hamilton, these guys, that's, that's who they were, Washington. They had their own farms 
and they would come and fight, and then they would go back to their farms. So this is, the idea of the citizen soldier was a radical breakthrough in politics and in the whole concept of what a man or a woman's life was. Freedom, autonomy, responsibility to your neighbors, and the, uh, the commitment to the community as a whole. All came from the idea of the citizen soldier.